course, what everybody's been dying to hear about, I'm sure, is the creation of your wonderful archive here, Cosmo DNA. Well, this is where everything you've seen comes together. And everything that's in my collection is represented here in some way. And other stuff that I found that I did not purchase myself. Uh, there's literally thousands of pieces of merchandise that have been done over the, the decades. We've got four plus decades of stuff. And it's all cataloged to the best of my knowledge. Right here at Cosmo DNA. The, the URL is OurStarBlazers.com. And the way it's set up is you are on the bridge of the Yamada and you've got access to all these different parts of the story. Let's say that you are a fan of Final Yamato. If you click on Final Yamato, it takes you to that section. And then you've got all these different sections you can look in. Uh, the articles, the history, which is a timeline, there's an art gallery, there's publishing, music and video, merchandising, and commentary. Every section has a commentary. That's where we go through the film itself, my friends and I, and comment on uh, all the scenes and what they represent and some of the history and some of the behind the scenes stuff. And we do all that also for the latest shows. There's an entire section devoted to 2199. And within this you'll find a commentary section. And this may be especially interesting to people who are just now starting to watch it, thanks to the English version coming out. Um, this was done over several years by two friends of mine named Louis Cotavillo and uh, our friend Daniel in uh, Australia. And the two of them together went through the entire series, episode by episode, and told you what you were looking at and talked about the history what went into it, whether it was a comparison with the previous anime, or something in the real world. And each one of these is like a novel. It's a gigantic resource of information. And eventually we'll do the same thing with 2202, but it's a bit early for that yet. If you're looking for our stuff on 2202, there's a section for that. It's under the special archive. You go to the Modern Saga, down here to Yamato 2202. Right now, it's a long string of articles that I update every month. Uh, but at some point, it's going to get its, its own front section, too. Um, this is how you can keep track of what's happening month by month. Every month, I publish a report. This is the most recent one. It's Report 15. It covers everything that happened last month, October 2017. So there was a huge month. Magazine articles came out. Toys were promoted. Interviews were published, there were videos, there was a restaurant collaboration, there were That's trailers, so and it all led up to the premiere of Yamato 2202 on uh, Chapter 3. And so I've kind of made up my job to follow all this news, which and I check in to various Japanese websites on a daily basis. This is all uh, current events. and. Uh, that was the most interesting transition I had to make back in 2009 when Resurrection came out I, I had something brand new to report about uh, for the first time and so a Website that had to do with just archival material was suddenly a place to go for news And it's been that way ever since because uh, after that movie came out of course there was a live-action film and then 2199 and there's been new stuff to report on every single month and so that's just part of my hobby now, to follow everything that's happening. All for the benefit of people who do not have access or don't know where to look, uh, or are just looking for one place where they can go and get it all. And that's Cosmo DNA in a nutshell. Now something that I know a lot of fans have been curious about, because we haven't seen you post about it on Cosmo DNA or anywhere else. Uh, what's your uh, opinion on the Funimation dub that we just found out about? Well, I'm really glad it's being done. I think it's long overdue. Uh, but I have chosen not to view it myself. Hmm. And I'll tell you why. It's a reason that I haven't seen anybody else bring up yet. But uh, my friends Louise and Daniel have been watching it. 
and they've been cluing me in and I wanted to wait until I had the opinion of someone I respect uh, before I decided to make the time investment. And what I've learned is that the dub acting is passable. Nobody has said it's great. Some have said, I like this voice, I don't like that voice. That much I could expect. Um, but as a writer and an artist myself, and also a director of animation, uh, I put a lot of importance behind the effort of everything that goes into a project. And with 2199, that effort was gigantic. They covered every aspect of it from transitioning the story to modern sensibilities, to giving it some scientific veracity with real uh, astronomy, and um, working out all of the concepts scientifically. You know, an enormous amount of work went into that show. And one of the other things that doesn't get nearly enough appreciation was the creation of an entire second language for the Gamelons. There was a linguistic expert on the staff who was asked to create a language for the actors to speak, you know, on the Gamelon side. And he actually did it. He created a structure, uh, he created syntax, he worked out how the verb forms would be used, you know, all those intricate things, and, and plus the words themselves. Uh, a lot of us can recognize gare gamelon, which is their salute, you know, whenever they do the big salute. They say gare gamelon and zar bilk, which is like, yes sir, you know. And it's fun to watch those and figure them out and realize this was somebody's passion. You don't do that if you don't have passion for the project. That's a whole new level to it, too. Right. And what I finally found out over the last week from my friends Louise and Daniel is that instead of recognizing that aspect of it and bringing it forward into the dub, they just mangled it. Somebody just went and made up sounds and didn't make any attempt for it to be literal or for it to have some integrity. And I just respect that original effort too much to sit through that treatment of it. Um, no disrespect to anybody who's working on the show, but it tells me that um, their level of involvement falls short of mine. And for me to invest my time in something like that, I need to know that the people who worked on it care about it at least as much as I do. Right. And if I had done that show, you know, if I had been asked to come in and, and work on that, uh, I would have made every effort to preserve that original language. And the fact that they didn't means either they weren't aware of it or they didn't care enough to make that choice. Right. And so, sorry Funimation, I'm out. <laughs> but I'm glad you're doing what you're doing. Well, as you can see, Tim has quite the extensive collection and we barely even scratched the surface. So I hope you liked what you saw. Like he said, if you want to see even more than what's in here, definitely head on over to Cosmo DNA. There's a new report every 15th? The 15th of every month, right. Awesome. So thank you so much, Tim, for showing us your collection. Uh, like I mentioned earlier on the first episode, Tim's going to be really active in our show, uh, bringing all of his Yamato goodness to us. So hopefully we will see more from him very soon. Thanks for watching. We will return. <laughs>